message is one of the Times Square Church pulpit series. It was recorded in the sanctuary of Times Square Church in Manhattan, New York City. Other tapes are available by writing World Challenge, Post Office Box 260, Lindale, Texas, 75771, or by calling 903-963-8626. None of these messages are copyrighted, and you are welcome to make copies for free distribution to friends. Holy Ghost and the Antichrist. The Holy Ghost and the Antichrist. Please turn to 2 Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians, 2nd chapter. I'm going to read to you 12 verses. First 12 verses of the 2nd chapter of 2 Thessalonians. If the new converts, if you get to Ephesians and Philippians, to keep going right. Timothy, you've gone too far. Second Thessalonians, the second chapter, beginning to read. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that you be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that day of the of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, that is the Antichrist, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was with you, I told you these things. And now you know what withholdeth that he may be revealed in his time. In other words, there's something restraining, there's something holding back. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth or restraineth will keep restraining until he be taken out of the way. Then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders, with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. For this cause God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Shall we pray? Holy Spirit, I yield to you as my guide. I yield to you as my anointing. I yield to you as the truth that is conveyed to my heart from the throne room of God. Holy Spirit, I need you right now to open my mind and my thoughts. Holy Spirit, move all through this congregation in the balcony and on the main floor and behind me all around us. Let the Spirit of the Lord come forth. Let there be a true anointing of the Holy Spirit. I take absolute, absolute authority in the name of Jesus Christ over every hindering spirit. Holy Spirit, restrain and push back the powers of darkness, the powers of weariness, and all of that which would keep the truth from finding its mark in our hearts. Transform us by the truth. Lord, give us liberty to preach the liberty of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost and the Antichrist and the message you put in my heart. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, the Antichrist is coming. And in fact, he's right on the horizon. I don't know if he's in the world today or not. I, I, I would rather believe that he is, even though Paul the Apostle thought the Antichrist would come in his time. Now, theologians are divided this matter of the Antichrist. There is one camp that believes that there is an Antichrist spirit that has been here since the cross. It's been anti-cross, anti-Christ, anti-God, and it's a spirit, it's an influence, and that anything that suggests that Jesus Christ was not God in the flesh is this spirit of Antichrist, and that's quite widely uh, believed by uh, many, many theologians. The Puritans are divided right down the middle on it. And they take it from 1 John 2.18. Don't turn, I'll read it to you. Little children, it's the last time. And as you have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now there are many Antichrists. 
whereby we know that it's the last time. Who is a liar? But he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. And then John goes on to call everyone an Antichrist follower or of the Antichrist spirit who denied that God was in Jesus in flesh. The scripture says, according to 1 John 4, 3, And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God, and that is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof you have heard that it shall come, even now it is in the world. Now we know that the spirit of Antichrist was at work even in John's time, in Paul's time. John added this, For many deceivers are entered into the world, who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Now, both John and Paul saw a great falling away, a great apostasy coming to the church. Not to the world. The world can't fall. It's never been there. It is the church. There's a great apostasy. Now, they were looking beyond their day, even though Paul talked about apostasy. John warned against apostasy. They talked about a, a, a spirit of iniquity that was going to come, a mystery of iniquity, and Paul said it doth already work. You see, the prophetic minds projecting into our day, the latter days, because their day was the beginning of the last days. Our day is the end of the last days. And they were seeing the latter of the last days. They, there was no way they could comprehend this great mystery of iniquity. They had to call it a mystery. Folks, it's not a mystery any longer. The Holy Ghost has stripped it of all of its mystery. And now we see the devices of the devil. We know exactly what Satan is trying to do. We're not ignorant of his devices. And in this last day, God has pulled back the curtain, exposed the spirit and the operation and the ministry of the Antichrist, setting up the stage for his kingdom. Now, folks, this is really not a prophecy message tonight. It's more about the ministry of the Holy Spirit, the fifth in the series. By the way, this is the first time in my ministry I've ever preached a series. Never did in my lifetime. I never thought I could. Because I was an evangelist, and I, I just preached uh, evangelistic subjects, take a text and, and preach. This is the first time as a pastor, or as an evangelist, that I've been on a series. I, this may be the last of the series, or it may go on another ten, I don't know. <laughs> but I'm enamored of the Holy Ghost. I'm in love with the Holy Ghost. And I'm anxious to know more about His power and His work. And if the Antichrist is about to come, and I believe that there is a man who's going to personify the wickedness, the incarnation of Satan himself, and all of it will be wrapped up in one man, and there'll be such a deception, and the world will be so in a position of deceivableness, and sin will have spun out of such control that they will be ready, as they're even in Russia now, they're crying for a dictator. Literally crying for a dictator. In, in fact, one uh, writer in, China, uh, in Russia said, we do not know how to live without a dictator. We cannot operate without a dictator. They're crying for a strong man now. And out of economic, social chaos, a strong man will arise. I personally believe there is a man of sin it's very clear, son of perdition, the son of Satan, a man who's going to come on the scene, who will come as an angel of light. He's going to come with lying wonders, not true miracles, but lying miracles, lying wonders. And uh, you, you think if you lived in the time of Paul the Apostle and John, how would they, looking at our time, understand the depth and the kinds of sin and iniquity that we would have invented. Uh, how, how would you have, if you could be projected back into history at a time, and you've already been in the 20th century, and you sit down with John and Paul and you're explaining television. You're explaining videos. You're explaining theaters and cars and trains and these big multi-ton uh, birds that fly through the sky called airplanes. 
and helicopters, radios, elevators. And they say, you're talking millennium. You say, no, I'm talking 20th century. And then you begin to explain, and yet the devil has taken all of those institutions, he's taking all of those things meant for our good, and turned them into evil, so that on television we have the filth right out of hell, and videos, and theater, and radio, and newspaper, and four-color pornography of nudeness and sexual activity, and you tried to explain to them it was a mystery of iniquity. We're not living in the day of mystery of iniquity. You and I know what the devil is doing now, taking every single institution in which we trusted and corrupting it, trying to corrupt the bride of Jesus Christ. Now, get it good, get it good, saints. Everything the devil is doing now in the way of throwing a flood of corruption is against the man-child in the desert. It's against the church of Jesus Christ. He's not flooding this world to try to make homosexuals more evil in their deeds. He is not trying to make gamblers more addicted. He is not really trying to do anything in that area. That is his territory already. He is trying to flood God's people. He is trying to get the minds and the hearts of the bride of Jesus Christ. He's after the bride. He's after the bride of Christ. I believe Paul is speaking of a human being, a man, son of perdition, son of Satan. We've not yet seen him arise. Why have we not yet seen the Antichrist? Why have, has he not been revealed? Why, why do we not have a greater sense of the imminence of his personality? Simply this, he has not appeared yet because the Holy Ghost is restraining him. I'll read it again. And now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. Second Thessalonians 2 Thessalonians 2.6 The New American Standard says, You know what restrains him now, so that in his time he may be revealed. You and I know why the Antichrist does not yet appear. You and I know there is a great falling away first. A great falling away, and here's, here's the point I'm trying to make. You think right now of ACT UP. By the way, tonight sometime there's supposed to be a blackout. I don't know what time it is. They're supposed to black out the city. Somebody was telling me before we come in uh, uh, to uh, remind us about AIDS. Now isn't that some power? that somebody in the homosexual community, we should pray about AIDS, we should be concerned about AIDS, yes. But to, in, in darkness seems to be a very legitimate representation of it. Darkness. You would think if you were really do it, they would light up everything. But to turn everything dark, that's supposed to happen tonight. If they do it in the city, I'll yell so loud you'll still hear my message. I, I don't even, that may be a rumor, but that's what I heard from five or six, is, if others heard about it, you're supposed to turn the lights off for 15 minutes uh, to think about AIDS. Stop and think about it right now, uh, of condoms being passed out in our schools without parental consent. You, you think of all of the flood of evil that is in this country so that even the wicked are, are shaking their head in disbelief saying, what is happening? And my Bible said the Holy Ghost is still here restraining. You tell me what it's going to be like when he's not restraining anymore. You tell me what it's going to be like when he is lifted. When he is no longer going to be restraining sin. He's standing there holding back the flood. The devil has sent a flood against the church of Jesus Christ. There's a flood. Now you mark it down when you hear about homosexual act up, when you hear about uh, abortion, you hear about all these things. That is aimed at the church. That is aimed at you if you are a true follower of Jesus Christ. That is to make you believe the devil has gained all the power and that our God has become weak and robbed you of your faith.
Can you imagine when he is taken away? Can you see how he's captured control of television and movies, education, medicine, designer drugs, one last attempt at playing God? Folks, it's not that the Holy Ghost has lost any power. The Holy Ghost at any moment can speak the word, push his mighty arm and push it up. A Holy Ghost could deal with it in one moment. He could smash and destroy the spirit of iniquity at a moment's time, but he will not go against man's free will. Man desires lust. He desires all restraints to be gone. And what we hear in America and the world today, no more restraints. Isn't it amazing that Clarence Thomas was only accused of uh, sexual harassment and he was made the brunt of horrible, unprecedented uh, persecution. And a basketball player publicly admits of having a fair after a fair so many he doesn't even know how to count them and he's a hero. A man is mocked because of just a rumor. Another man admits it and he's a hero. And yet the Holy Ghost is restraining. The Holy Ghost is still keeping the Antichrist back. Satan's determined to remove every restraint. He wants no more restraints on homosexuals. He wants to get our children, even the adolescents, we have, for the first time in our history of this city, homosexuals standing in our subways this past week passing out one million condoms. Where did they get a million? Now this amazes me. New Jersey is broke. New Jersey is laying off thousands of employees and yet Governor... Who's his name? <laughs> He's just found. $15 million to give to abortion clinics to advise abortion. New York is busted. We are broke, but they have found $25 million for condoms. Then it dawns on you what's happened 10 years ago. This wouldn't even been, this would not have been an issue. And we wake up 10 years later and we look at the legislation. We look at the politicians. We, we look everywhere. We look to Washington and say, where there's, where's a man? Where's a politician? Where's the legislator? Where's anybody that's awaking to what's happened? What happened? We woke up, we woke up one day and the flood was upon us. We walk up, you, you say, where is one person on a school board that can stand up? There's only one on the school board in New York. And we wrote her a letter from this church and encouraged her. We got a letter back thanking us for our prayers. She's the only one that stood up against condoms. And, and you sit back and say, what kind of people are these? What kind of people are these in Washington, D.C.? What kind of people who will... Let murders get away. They don't want to give the electric chair for murder, but they will stand and stomp and scream for the right to kill babies. And now, if you're going to kill babies, you might as well kill your own and your infirm, and euthanasia is now on our doorstep. And you say, what kind of people are these? Folks, what's happening now is not human depravity. It is not an outbreak of human depravity. This is beyond human depravity. This is out of the pits of hell. This is satanic. And they don't even know what's happening. They are under the control of a supernatural power. It's not human depravity anymore. America is far beyond human depravity. And yet the Holy Ghost is restraining. The Bible gives full evidence that the Holy Spirit has been taken in times past from institutions and societies when they reached a certain point. You remember the days of Noah, don't you? God saw the earth it was full of violence and the Bible's God said his thoughts, the thoughts of mankind are continuously evil. This God said, I'm going to permit the Holy Spirit 
to deal and convict for 120 years to the day and the hour. He made it known to Noah, from this hour that I speak, 120 years, rather, 120 years, and then I'm going to lift my spirit. The earth was filled with violence, and wickedness of man was great, the thoughts of his heart only evil continually, Genesis 6, 5. A 120 year reprieve. Folks, do you know that since uh, 1776 we've already had a 216 years of reprieve? God has given us uh, 216 from 120, 80, what, 96 years? Uh, uh, how many is that? How many more years have we been given? 96 more years than was given the generation of Noah. And the scripture makes it clear. He said, my spirit will not always strive with man, yet his day shall be 120 years. 120 years to the very hour God locked his eight souls into the ark. And in the second month, the 17th day of the month, the 17th day of the second month, it rained 40 days and nights, and all flesh died, and all in whose nostrils was the breath of life. Folks, I can't begin to even conjure up what it was like toward those last days when the Holy Spirit was pulling up stakes, when the Holy Spirit was wrapping things up. I picture it the same way today. The Holy Spirit is a great canopy. He's been holding back. And now the, the stakes are being pulled up over here. He's already taken down this side of the tent. Now he's taking down this and the poles and the stakes are being pulled up. And as he does, the flood rushes in. And that's exactly what's happening now. Can you believe that just before the rain fell that last week, all hell broke loose? No one valued life, sensuality out of control. I wouldn't have wanted to be on the streets, any street, that last week when the Holy Spirit's interest were going to be in that little ark. The Holy Spirit would, would forsake the whole earth and the interest of God and the work of the Holy Spirit in that little ark of safety. Folks, that ark of safety represents the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And that's where his interest is now. Those who are in the blood of Christ. Those who are secured by his precious blood. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost was taken away from the temple in Shiloh. Oh, how God used to move in Shiloh. This is where Israel gathered to worship the Lord. Many, many great moments of the visitation and manifestation of the Holy Spirit at Shiloh. But Israel reached a point, God's people reached a point of such rebellion and apostasy. God said, I can't take it anymore. It's over. And the Spirit of God began to lift. The ark was taken to the battlefield and captured. Eli's sons were killed. And David said, the Lord forsook the tabernacle at Shiloh. The Lord forsook his tabernacle at Shiloh. Eli's daughter-in-law gave birth. Just at the moment the glory was departing from Israel, and she named him Ichabod, which in Hebrew means the glory or the Spirit of the Lord has departed from Israel. The glory, the Spirit has departed. David understood something of that when he cried, Oh God, take not your Holy Spirit from me. In fact, in Ezekiel the 10th chapter, you might want to go home and read Ezekiel the 10th chapter. The prophet Ezekiel is, is just... Uh, Petrified, he, he, he looks in amazement as the Spirit of God moves out of the holy place into the outer court and there appears on the threshold the cherubim and they gather up the glory of God, the presence of the Lord taken on the wings of the cherubim and he sees the Spirit of God being lifted, the restraining power. Then the glory of the Lord departed from off the threshold of the house and stood above the cherubims and the glory mounted up from the earth. Can you picture that? Comes out of the holy place into the 
inner court, then to the outer court, and then to the threshold, and at the threshold of the tabernacle. The glory of the Lord is gathered under the cherubim, resting above it, and departs. Folks, what will it be like when the Holy Spirit departs? He's already departed from many institutions. He's departed from many churches. He's departed from many uh, denominations called churches. He has literally departed. It's Ichabod written on their doors. Now listen, please. I believe the Holy Spirit days of striving nearly coming to an end. I believe the pleading and the wooing and the striving of the Holy Ghost is now in the final ingathering. There's a final ingathering happening right now. Listen very closely to me, please. I want to share with you what I hear the Holy Spirit saying to me. I went off stage for a while doing the singing because I was hearing a clear, clear word from the Holy Spirit. Let me share the best I know how what I'm hearing from the Holy Ghost. First of all, the Holy Ghost is deeply grieved by the lukewarmness of so many who were once so deeply committed to Jesus Christ. There is a deep, deep grief in the Holy Spirit. He says, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby we are sealed unto the day of redemption. Can you imagine how alarming it is to the Holy Spirit to see a once on fire believer, once so devoted to Jesus, drifting away and going the wrong direction. I know what it's like as one of the pastors of this church to see a number of people, not a large number, but even one is too many. Those that I, I personally know, now if I know you personally, please don't take it personal. <laughs> Unless the Holy Ghost points his finger at you. Because there is a danger of not hearing the gospel because of familiarity with the messenger. Not hearing the message because of familiarity with the messenger. And that's dangerous. We told you when we came here, we didn't come here to socialize and play ball with you. We came here to provoke you to righteousness so we could stand around the throne redeemed by the blood of Christ. But I know the grief of my heart when I know of the backsliding of some of you who sit in this house tonight. And you're, you are not where you were before. I had another message that I was thinking of preaching called if this were my last message in Times Square Church. Now I hope to preach a lot of messages here but if it were my last I think I would want to take some of you aside tonight and look you right in the eye and point a loving finger in your face and say with all love you know what you were you have changed. You don't have the zeal you don't have the fire something has gone wrong you've lost something with God You've lost something with the Lord. And I want to tell you, I think it also reminds you that the Holy Spirit's not going to sit idly by and let it happen. Because he's been sent on a divine mission. And that eternal mission that he's been sent to accomplish in your heart and mind is to bring you to the bridegroom. His mission is to keep the devil's paws off of you, your soul. His mission is eternal and he won't be moved from that mission. But folks, he will not work against your will. And you have to see, you have to be aware of his workings, his wooings, his movings, his stirrings in your heart so that you can respond. The Holy Ghost is like a mother hen. One eye on the gathering storm and the other eye on you. And saying, the storm is coming, gather under the wing quickly. You can be sure the Holy Ghost is not going to let you go. Let me tell you something about the work of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is a great arranger. Not the lone ranger, the great arranger. I'm amazed at the way he arranges things. Like meetings like this and arranging for you to be here tonight. And he goes into my study during the week and I don't know you're going to be here. I don't know who you are. You may be a visitor. 
and God moves on my heart, or he moves on Brother Don, or Brother Dave, or, or Brother Don, or Brother Bob, and, and we're down there writing, not knowing we're writing a letter to you. We don't know we're going to stand up and preach right at you. But the Holy Ghost knows all about it, and he's arranged for some of you to be in this meeting tonight. Because you need exactly what the Holy Ghost is... Per he has arranged a message, and he's arranged a seat for you at Times Square Church. You may be in the balcony, you may be here. You say, oh, I just came. No, you just didn't come. It's not an accident. The Holy Ghost knows no accidents. He arranges it. You can be running from God, and uh, you turn on the radio, and suddenly you just, you're just going through the stations, and... There's a sentence, like an arrow, right to your heart. This is the end of side one. You may now turn the tape over to side two. open the mail and somebody's written you a letter. The Holy Ghost has arranged it all. Hallelujah. I, I, I think I told you the story. I was in a park in Los Angeles preaching and there was a, a man who'd been having an affair. He was sitting there with his wife, living in sin. He got so convicted at the message, he started running. He was a jogger and he said, honey, I got to go jogging. <laughs> you can't jog away the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost was after him. The Holy Ghost was arranging the whole matter. He got a mile and a half away, and he thought he was he, he couldn't hear anymore. And all of a sudden, I don't know why I said it, I grabbed the microphone, and somehow God boosted the horsepower of that microphone, and I yelled, You can't run from the Holy Ghost! And he looked straight up in the air turned around and ran back, grabbed his wife right while I was preaching, came up front and said, I need help. He said, I heard God. It wasn't God, it was Dave Wilkerson. God was speaking through him. <laughs> there are times you may be under an attack of the enemy and you're alone and you're hurting and you, you're wondering what to do. But the arranger is at work. Hallelujah. Sometimes it's a book. It's just a book. Brother Bob told us money about it. An old box of books and he picks up a book and God, the Holy Ghost, arranged the whole thing and we got the benefit of some of those morsels this morning. See, the Holy Ghost is always arranging. Satan can tempt you only so far and then comes a way of escape and that's the Holy Spirit who restrains. The devil can go so far and the Holy Ghost says, no further, no further. Beloved, you and I have an appointment at the marriage supper of the Lamb. And the Holy Spirit's going to stop at nothing to get us there. Hallelujah. I'll tell you what, nobody can make you more miserable than the Holy Ghost. I call it Holy Ghost miseries or Holy Ghost miserables. Do you know what the Holy Ghost does? He, he, he takes inventory of your life. You walk out of here tonight, the Holy Ghost goes right with you. And, and, and he, he will take inventory of your job, your career, every place you go, the friends you associate with, every dinner appointment, your shopping sprees. You go to the mall, you go to Macy's, he's there. Every time you sit down and socialize, everything you do, he is there, and he takes an account, and he is so determined to get you to the marriage supper of the Lamb. He's so determined to fight for your soul. He's so much on your side. He's so much your Eliezer. 
to bring Rebecca home to Isaac. That he will pour on you when he sees you doing something wrong. When he sees you just going one step off in the wrong direction. The worst loneliness, the worst emptiness, the worst misery a man or woman can ever know on this earth. I know. There's sometimes I, I, I've just been called to a place and I had to sit in the seat of the scornful. And I'd hear a speaker get up at some dinner and mock God or say something. And the Holy Ghost would whisper, I'm leaving, are you coming along? <laughs> and if I didn't obey that first impulse, I'll tell you, I got a knot in my belly. It got bigger and bitter, bigger, and I got bloated. And I got sick. And I felt empty. And I felt dry because the Holy Ghost was outside waiting for me. The Holy Ghost said, I'll not endure this. And I tell you, he will watch over you. There, have you ever wondered why some of the things you're doing that ought to make you happy are making you miserable? What do you think it is? Or who it is? It's the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Thank God for his faithfulness. Thank God. I'm going to make a statement right now. I'm going to talk to the Holy Ghost on your behalf. And I said reverently, oh Holy Ghost, for everybody in this building that loves you, the moment they go to the wrong place and head the wrong direction, baptize them with misery. <laughs> Pour the miseries on. He does that out of love to draw you back. To show you how empty it is. Hallelujah. Somehow, some way, he's going to let you know it's wrong. And if there's any of the Antichrist spirit anywhere near you, there will be an alarm go off. Now, here's something else I hear from the Holy Spirit. There are two things we should be watching for now as believers in these last days. Two things to be watching for. First of all, on one hand, watch for the lifting of all the restraints as, an Antichrist, as the Antichrist uh, draws nigh. We're getting near the revelation of the Antichrist. And I'll tell you what, if the Antichrist is that close, how much closer is the coming of the Lord? Oh, how close must be the coming of the Lord? See, watch for the restraints. And at the same time, watch for a greater restraining, life-giving measure of the Holy Ghost in the saints. I, let, me, let me enlarge on it, please. Follow me, please. We have been praying against all kinds of inroads of evil. But folks, I, I really believe in my heart that we're going to see a moving of the Holy Spirit. A great moving of the Holy Spirit where people are hungry and reaching out to God. But we are not going to see, we are not going to see society turning to the better. We're not going to see New York or any other city being reformed. If it is, it'll be just another form of deception. No, the Bible said evil men are going to wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Jesus said that and he made it very, very clear. It's going to spin out of control. Folks, I believe with all my heart that what we're seeing right now in wickedness, such vile wickedness on the face of the earth, and especially in America, we're becoming the biggest producers. We have become the biggest producers of pornography. Seven billion dollar industry now in America. Seven billion dollars. We're selling pornography to the whole world. We used to be the missionary nation sending out missionaries. Now we're sending out pornography more than anything else. But you see, what we're seeing now is very tame to what is coming. When I, I was backstage, I, I was just walking, and the Holy Spirit, if I know Him at all, if He abides in me, and I know He does, and if He abides in you, I believe you're going to hear it in your inner man. The Holy Spirit in you will bear witness to what I'm about to say. God made it very clear to me that I was to stand here tonight in love and warn you, warn all of us, that the Antichrist is at the door. The revelation of the Antichrist is very, very close. And that what we're seeing right now is tame. That there's going to be such an outbreak of violence, 
There's going to be such an outbreak of sin and corruption that what we see now is absolutely juvenile. It's tame in comparison. And it's going to be so vile, it's going to be so corrupted that even the ungodly, the humanly depraved, will shake their head in wonder. What has happened to us? What is going on? What is the spirit that has been released? It will be known by all. Everyone will know it's supernatural, that it's not human, it's Satan himself setting the stage for the acceptance of the big lie, the Antichrist. Everything anti-Christ. Do you know there are agents of Satan right now all over this city and all over this nation and the world that would do anything to crucify you, to kill you as a Christian, and to hate the Christ that you believe in and preach? There is such an anti-Christ sentiment now, not just in the movies, but all through our society. It is going to just blow out of proportion so that uh, nobody without Christ is going to be able to withstand it. We are coming very close to the fulfillment of Revelation 22.11. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. He that's filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that's righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that's holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. It's almost as, as if just before the Lord comes and all hell breaks loose, the Lord says, freeze! Everybody freeze! Stop! He that's filthy, let him stay filthy. He that's wicked, let him stay wicked. He that's righteous, my spirit will not strive with man any more. Now, here's what I believe is happening. While the Holy Spirit is taken away from the institutions of this world, while His restraining power is being lifted in New York City, Chicago, Miami, and all of the United States and around the world, as these restraints are being lifted and as men chase after their wicked lusts, and they give vent to the violence and the hell that is in them, the Holy Spirit saying, they don't want me, I go to my temple. Where is his temple? Right here. God says, I move to my temple, and from now on my ministry, my work is in my house, in my temple. And that should give you great hope and joy in your heart that all around you, while things are falling apart, you're going to grow stronger and do exploits in the name of Jesus. You're going to stand more holy, more righteous than any other generation because where sin abounds, grace of the Holy Ghost will much more abound. The Spirit of the Lord will come upon His people. They will prophesy on the streets. They will not be afraid to die. And he that hath from him shall be taken and given to him that hath not. Or he that hath not will be taken and given to him that hath. Those that had a little measure and would not receive it, that will be taken from him. And those who pursue the Holy Spirit, those who want Him with all their heart, there will be a glorious measure poured in upon the saints of God. Beloved, we face a day, we face a day, and I prophesy it, we face a day and an hour and hour when you can have a greater measure of the Holy Spirit. You can have greater conviction against sin. You can have more guidance than you've ever had. You can walk in the Spirit and live in the Spirit now. Because His only interest left is the bride. His only interest left now is to preserve. Oh yes, you say, you mean he's leaving America, he's leaving the earth? No, he's not leaving the earth. The Holy Spirit's not being lifted from the earth. He's going to his temple. He's going to stop restraining. The Bible makes that, I just read it to you. He will restrain until his time. To, until the time the Antichrist to be revealed. The restraining work of the Holy Spirit will end. Now. With clo in closing, I want to say this about walking in the Spirit. It says, if you live in the Spirit, walk in the Spirit. Folks, I'm so simple. The Holy Ghost has to break it down to me like I was a fifth grader. I, 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 I keep arguing. I, I argue lovingly with the Holy Ghost. I, I say, Holy Ghost, 
I can't understand what these Puritans and these other men are saying. You've got to speak plain to me. I'm so dumb. I'm so thick. Make it so that I can explain as it's out. Lord, what do you mean, live in the Spirit? And it's simply this from the Holy Ghost. Take it for what it's worth. Living in the Spirit is simply renouncing the world completely and turning everything over to the Holy Ghost. Everything. And he said, if, if you're going to renounce the world, and you're going to give me charge of your life, then let me have the charge. If you're going to live in the Spirit, then walk it. Let me give you the direction. Let me lead your life. Folks, we're not going to make it. We're going to need the Holy Ghost. We're going to need Him. Where are you going to go? You're going to see dead churches everywhere. You can't have a, a, a... Thank God there's a live church. There are many live churches. Thank God for them. But what are you going to do? We've got a mad devil who knows his time is short. And he's come down on the earth to deceive if it were possible, even the elect. It doesn't say it's possible. It said if it's possible, he's going to try. But you're going to see the flood on all sides. The flood's going to go higher and higher. But you're going to rise up in the wings of the Holy Spirit above the flood. Hallelujah. And you're going to yield to the Holy Ghost and say, Holy Spirit, I'm not going to make any decisions on my own anymore. I'm going to wait on you. I'm going to let you direct me. He knows the way around in these last days. I have set my heart to let the Holy Ghost do what God sent him to do. God sent him to convict me of my sins, so I say, Jesus, by your Spirit, convict me. You, you said you're my guide. Lord, I'm going to stay in my closet until I hear what to do. I'm going to, every, I'm going to give everything to you. I don't want to go anywhere. I don't want to do anything until I talk to you. Holy Spirit, I want you to lead my life. He said, you live in the Spirit, then walk in the Spirit. And if you walk in the Spirit, you will not give in to the lust of the Antichrist spirit that's in the world today. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. Is He abiding in you? Why don't you just talk to Him right now say, Holy Ghost, I acknowledge you. I acknowledge your work. Stand with me, please. Let's talk to the Holy Spirit right now. Tell him you acknowledge. Holy Spirit, I acknowledge that you live in me. You abide in me. I want you to lead me and guide me from this night on. I want to give my whole life to you, Holy Spirit, to be my guide, my life and my strength and my hope in bringing Jesus Christ to my heart in greater measure. Holy Spirit, as I pray, I ask you to go all through this congregation and remove all fear from our hearts. Lord, fearful days lie ahead, awesomely fearful days. There, there, there could be no prophet, there could be no minister, no shepherd that could stand in this pulpit and clearly reveal to us what it's going to be like. It's beyond our imaginations even. He said, it's so far beyond what we could conceive. But Lord, you've not given us the spirit of fear. We don't face this hour alone. We face this hour full of the Holy Ghost. Full of the Spirit of the living God. Holy Spirit, I acknowledge you before this people. I acknowledge you as the ruler of my life. I acknowledge you as the one who is able now to deliver people from sin. I acknowledge you as the one who brings us to Christ and magnifies him before the whole world. Hallelujah. This is the conclusion of the tape.